Good morning. 96% of the world's consumer resides outside the United States. Where will your next customers come from? Will increase in customers increase your business revenue? What happens when spark meets fuse? When you have a good product and a good strategy? We all deserve to be a millionaire. Remember, never be afraid to try. The ark was built by amateurs and the Titanic was built by professionals. Our theme this year is tracking and tackling consequences in cosmet cosmetology and trichology. In business, we have to make many choices. Some of the choices we make are more important than others. But our success relies largely on the kind of uh, choices we make because we have to live with those consequences. Uh, thank you, Omix, for putting together this one-of-a-kind conference attended by successful entrepreneurs and executives, renowned academics, and policymakers in the, who are reinventing the beauty industry right now in the world. To all our international guests, my fellow speakers, and my colleagues here and abroad, you are the best and the brightest, and I'm looking forward to meeting you in the next three days. They say that to see eye to eye, we have, it helps to meet face to face. To the organizers of this conference, thank you for inviting me again this year. And um, it's my pleasure to be here. I am here. I am here today to share with you a radical rethinking of how we can create value to the products we produce and the services we offer. To encourage you to pursue a global vision and to expand your work internationally. I am going to talk about what it takes to go global, to be aware of where the market is heading, and to understand best practices in building a global brand. The main takeaway of my talk is, your big opportunity is right where you are now. There are a few things better in life than knowing that you are in the right career and right job and a few things worse than knowing that you're stuck in the wrong one. Uber, WhatsApp, WeChat, Instagram, you've heard of these big names. Why are we not developing apps? In 2014, Microsoft bought Minecraft, a gaming software from Mojang, for $2.5 billion. Why are we not making, or why, why aren't we game designers? Also in 2014, I've, uh, Apple bought Beats for $3 billion. This is a $3 billion question I have for you today. Why are we here? To look at the answer, to get to the answer, I want to take all of you to look at who and what in the mergers and acquisition, acquisition um, in the beauty industry. In the recent years, Procter & Gamble bought Max Factor for $1.14 billion. Whoops. Again, Procter & Gamble uh, bought Noxel Group. They are the makers of CoverGirl and uh, Noxima for $1.3 billion. Avon sold, sold its uh, perfume unit for $210 million, cash. Unilever bought for Bearge Lines for $1.55 billion. <gasps> no. I am going to be in trouble. Uh, for Burge Line was actually, is actually a family-owned company based in New York, and um, it was said that it was reported that the profit was approximately six hundred seventy million dollars. Ah, perfect. 
for this? How do I do that? There should be something here. Other things that are happening, we have Allergan bought Skin Medica, L'Oreal bought US uh, brand Urban Decay, um, and L'Oreal bought The Body Shop. So I have, I want to give you a $121 billion answer to the $3 billion question. We are here today because we know that in 2016, it has been projected that the beauty industry is going to be worth $121 billion. Imagine tapping 1% of that. Second, we are here today because if everything else fails, we know that the beauty industry is recession proof. During the recession, did we stop having our hair cut, right? We didn't. So for those who are not here today, is it too late for them to start? Well, they better show up next year, but is it too late? Did you know that Procter & Gamble was founded in 1837? And last year, 177 years later, uh, uh, Olay Regeneris was the number one skincare, anti-aging skincare brand in the United States. That product alone made $103 million. Avon was founded in 1886, and it was started by a book salesman. He crafted these perfumes that he was giving away as gifts to uh, anyone who bought his books. But when he found out that the customers who were women, they were more interested in the perfumes that he was making. So he started selling those perfumes. So that, is, that was how Avon started. Cody started in 1904, and they own Rimmel, Calvin Klein, and Philosophy. L'Oreal was founded in 1909. And it started with a few hair dyes. This is for my hair friends here. Uh, Eugene Schuler started with a few hair dyes that he, that he sold, he formulated them, he's a chemist. He formulated these hair dyes and he primarily was selling them to his hairdressers. Estee Lauder started in 1946 with only four cosmetic products. Tonight, I'm having dinner with them in New York. But you know how many SKUs they own right now? They own 20,000 SKUs. They started with four products. And they own all these brands. Aveda, Bobby Brown, Clinique, Coach, Flirt, Glam Glow, which they just bought <coughs> this year. Joe Malone, my per favorite perfume. La Mer, Marnie, Mac, Michael Kors. Prescriptive, Smashbox, Tom Ford, Tommy Hilfiger, Tory Burch. Big names. They started with four cosmetic products. Mary Kay started in 1963. See, the biggest reason that now is the right time to start is that because later it never is. I can wait for old age, but I don't have to. So in 2013, I founded my own skincare company, B Skincare and Cosmetics. B is a premium brand, family-owned company. All our products are designed and produced in New York, and we specialize in paraben-free, botanical-based, botanical and vitamin-based anti-aging skincare and cosmetics. In 2014, we launched on Amazon.com and our products were featured in the Emmy Awards and the American Music Awards. This year, 2015, two years after we were founded, we launched on Taobao.com, the largest e-commerce in the world, and our products were featured in the gifting event at the Oscars. We are a company that does things right. We are a member of the Safe Cosmetics Business Network and we made a pledge to detox our production and packaging practices 
launching an eco-friendly and environmentally conscious collection. We use natural ingredients such as papaya, hazelnut, shea butter, avocado, lentil seed, apple, orange, Moroccan argan oil, sunflower, grape, marigold. I'm Asian. I'm Asian, so a lot of my work are infused with Eastern practices, and I use a lot of Asian ingredients, such as ginkgo biloba, white tea, green tea, ginseng, and Japanese knotweed. Businesses no longer have a choice whether we should do social media. The question is how well we do it. Our Facebook page has 12,000 followers, all generic, we didn't buy them. Our Google page has 121,000 viewers. This is the SD Lauder, this gentleman over here is the vice president of uh, SD Lauder, and I'm meeting them tonight for dinner. Um, about networking, it's not about who you know, but who knows you. And what I've learned in my short career is that, is that the richest and the most successful people build and develop networks while others look for work. This is Mary Murphy. She's a judge, uh, Fox TV, So You Think You Can Dance. John Saley is a former NBA player. AJ McLean, Backstreet Boys. And this was our event at the American Music Awards. Um, we did our first makeover. We partnered with a Beverly Hills plastic surgeon this year. For me, I think make, a makeover is a rebranding of a human being. And nothing makes a woman more beautiful than knowing that she's beautiful. And our goal is to achieve sustainable change and not just little makeovers. Our company was designed to sell. We were thinking global from day one. Even though you don't, it doesn't happen right away, for us it took two years. Having a global perspective shapes the product, the brand, and the business model from the very beginning. So we looked at when we started the business, how are we going to create, uh, build this company and be global? So we look at four different things. How are we going to, going to develop and produce the product? Where are we going to sell this? Who are we going to sell it to? And how are we going to promote it? So first we look at what do people do? Why do you buy the things that you buy? I went to Columbia University. What about you? Why did you choose the school that you went to? Where do you like to shop? How much are you willing to spend? Understanding consumer behavior considers the many reasons why someone in that market or country would buy our products. We went to China and Japan and also in Jap and, um, uh, North America because we, first of all, because we know that Asia Pacific is set to become the re richest region. Why? 70% of the world's purchasing power is located outside of the United States. When everything goes everywhere, nothing goes anywhere. When we decided to sell our products, we have to decide, we had to decide and pick a market to sell to. So this is my bucket list. I follow this based on where should I sell my products. So right now we are in China. We are in the United States at um, Amazon.com. We just launched in Japan. And this is very, very interesting to look at. Four out of the first five, top five countries are in Asia. So first let's talk about China. Chinese people are very uh, nationalist, but they like American products. I was just in Hong Kong in January, I mean in November, and um, they are I found out that they are very, they're very, very proud to be Chinese. So when we designed our logo, um, 
We had intended for our logo and our brand to be attractive to the Asian market. The red and orange color symbolizes festivity and prosperity in the Chinese culture, and so it sends a very positive um, message to our Chinese shoppers. Being symbolic is very important to doing business in China. In China, oops, it jumped, sorry. In China, uh, Chinese shoppers understandably prefer to shop for foreign brands when it comes to two things, infant formula and cosmetic and beauty products. Hold on, we're going to get there. Sorry, I'm rewinding this. Geographically, in the beauty products industry, there are two countries to mention as being the top consuming countries in cosmetic and skin care, and that is the United States and Japan. So let's talk about the United States. In the U.S., the cosmetic industry has matured, but the natural and organic market sales are increasing at 20% each year. So we created a papaya line from cleanser, toner, night cream, day cream, serum, and an exfoliating enzyme scrub. We sell this on Amazon, and we also sell this on our website. We also made a vitamin C line. We have a cleanser, toner, serum, night cream, a peel kit, and a day cream. Other things that we had to look at, demographics, who are buying our products, men versus women, and what age group drives a demand for a specific product line. This is a men's skincare line that was designed specifically for and by a plastic surgeon, and specific for men. Did you know that the men's line market hit 3.9 billion in 2013? That's about 15% growth since 2008. Imagine tapping 1% of 3.9 billion. So I, I see a lot of trends now, with even in plastic surgery, a lot of male procedures are, are being looked into. It has also been found that 63% of men, 25 to 34 year olds, use branded skincare products, as opposed to 58% of 18 to 24 year olds, 32% of 55 to 64 year olds, and only 29% of men aged over 65 years old. So when we designed our men's line, we had to deviate from thinking that we just have to design an anti-aging line to capture the, the older, the 29, the 65 year old market. Other things to consider about the US shop shopper, have you seen those busloads of Chinese tourists in Disneyland? or Legoland, well, they're now going to Rodeo Drive in Beverly Hills. And this is the perfect demonstration of what I said in my introduction. Your opportunity is right here now. A lot of these speakers here are plastic surgeons, dermatologists, hairstylists. You think that, well, I don't have to listen to Liz because I really don't have a product that I can box and sell on Amazon and ship to China. Well, what I wanted you to look at is to consider promoting your services globally because your consumers are now coming to you. If you're a Beverly Hills plastic surgeon, the Chinese are now in Rodeo Drive. Let's go to Japan. So we launched on Rakuten Ichiba. It's the largest e-commerce platform in Japan this month. And the reason for that is this. Did you know that Japan's per capita consumption of skincare and cosmetics is four times higher than in European countries such as Germany, United Kingdom, and France? 
Japan has been crowned the leading skincare market globally and is projected to reach $23.41 billion. Imagine tapping 1% of $23 billion. We can be very conservative and say 0.05% of $23 billion. Canada is right down the list of consumer power, but I said, well, it's right next door to where I live, so let's go to Canada. We, went, we launched on Amazon.com, so afraid to do these things. Canada with, here we go, Canada. With the intention to, not, in Canada, imports satisfy 94.9% of Canada's demand for cosmetics. The next thing we looked at is pricing. Um, this slide shows, hang on, okay. This slide shows that higher income skincare and cosmetic consumers are more likely to shop online. I think my computer died. Did you take my somewhere? So um, we have different pricing categories for our products. We have a wholesale line, uh, retail, web, pri uh, and and we also introduce a consignment model. There has to be a way where uh, iPhone can do these things all at the same time. So um, pricing, we have a wholesale and distribution and retail price and web price for doctors. And um, what we did is that we um, offer our products at wholesale to doctor's offices. And um, we have a MSRP and they sell it at 100% markup. So for instance, our liquid powder foundation are sold to doctor's offices for $16 and they mark it up for at $35. Um, so we launched our physician and medispa merchandising program, which includes anything from website design to retailing. And our brand shoppers can buy BIA products in their doctor's offices or uh, favorite spa. And that is our first point of contact to our customers. Globally, 40% of online users have bought goods online, either through their desktop or laptop, iPhone or iPad. In the United States, every year, more than 100 million Americans purchase goods online. E-commerce is the one of the fastest growing sales channel in the United States. And the industry is worth $188 billion. U.S. consumers buy around $4.3 billion in cosmetics online. Skincare purchases grew to 36% in 2014 as compared to 24% in 2012. Online hair care purchase grew 24% from 14% in 2012. So when we launched, we looked at, we wanted to know where do online shoppers shop? Because there's so many ways to sell online. What we found is that, and surveys showed, that Amazon.com is the top destination for online skincare and beauty shopping, followed by Sephora, then drugstore.com, then eBay, then major drugstores and mass retailers, and that is your Target and Costco. Then we looked at what would online shoppers want to see or look for when they're shopping online. And we found that their specific, uh, find that specific, finding specific products for their skin problems is most important for online shoppers. And so that is why we have created uh, collections like dry skin line and um, oily skin care line and it provides every, uh, the full solution from cleanser 
toner, night cream, serum, eye cream, and day cream, all packaged together. And that's how we sold our products on Amazon.com and as well as on our website. The second thing that um, uh, consumers, online shoppers like is free shipping. So we give free shipping. Uh, and finding their favorite brands and obviously best price. What we did is that our price for in the doctor's offices are much uh, competitive, higher on the web than for doctor's offices uh, uh, pricing. So let's go to China. Why did we go to China? Did you know that Taobao.com, have you heard of Taobao? Oh, Taobao, T-A-O-B-A-O. -A -O. Taobao is owned by Alibaba. Have you heard of Alibaba? The biggest IPO ever. Taobao boasts more daily unique visitors than that of the Eiffel Tower, the Notre Dame, the Great Wall, and New York City, New York's Grand Central Station combined. You cannot ignore Taobao or China. More than 240 million Chinese shop online. Of that sum, Alibaba, not Amazon, handled more than 90% of sales. About 180 billion of sales more than eBay and Amazon. Imagine tapping 1% of that, 180 billion. One trillion. That is the gross merchandise volume of Tmall and Taobao platforms. Those are bo both owned by Alibaba. And it's an open B2C, business to consumer platform, just like Amazon. eBay is consumer to consumer, right? I have a bag I want to sell, I'll put it on eBay, as, uh, not as a vendor, but as an individual. I don't, I don't have to register on eBay as a business. On Amazon, you have to be a business. Register. Launching on Taobao gave us access to Chinese speaking shoppers in mainland China, Macau, Taiwan, and Hong Kong. In Japan, we launched in June. Japan is, in Japan, Rakuten is the largest e commerce site in Japan and amongst wor the world's largest. Uh, it has 47 million members, and one in every th three Japanese is a member. Globalization is my secret friend. To dream beyond and to choose success requires awareness of the fullness of our own potential. Here's my second takeaway. The ultimate victory in strategy whether it is a personal goal or business, is derived from the inner satisfaction of knowing that you have done your best and that you have gotten the most out of what you had to give. And that is, in business, return on equity and, and ROI, return on investment, right? Remember my question earlier. Will more customers or patients bring you more business? The answer is not necessarily yes, because 80%, eight zero of business comes from repeat customers and not new one. Transforming a global, transforming a brand into a global business doesn't happen overnight by simply writing a marketing plan and an advertising strategy. It would take a lot of knowledge and understanding of each market and identifying what your customers need and we have to align with their values. Uh, thank you and I hope that you make the most out of this conference and remember that the main takeaway, that your big opportunity maybe right where you are right now. Thank you.
I take the immense pleasure of inviting Dr. Angelo Ribello to felicitate Liz Badelas with keynote certificate. Oh, oh. nice. Uh, nice to meet you, Liz Badelas. Hi. Congratulations for Thank your you. presentation. Oh. I felicitate you for the presentation, but special for your work and research. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.